What if Steph Curry was in LeBron James draft class? Just how many championships and MVPs would Steph's limitless range steal from the game's greats in an era when the average team only made 5.2 three-pointers a game? What's up, Mike here, and welcome to a new series. Welcome to a new passion project. I hope you can see on the main channel we've been trying to push new ideas, and here on Coors Light, you can expect a lot of new ideas, a lot of new videos that I know you are going to love. So let's see what happens when Steph Curry takes on LeBron James in his own draft class. So with the number seven pick in the 2003 draft, we take Steph Curry, who will be joined by a roster that is highlighted by players we are going to trade away immediately in Jalen Rose and Jay Williams. I'm sorry, Jay, you're like a father figure to me. I do hope you revive your career someone else, but as we ruthlessly make moves, Jalen Rose, you are out of here. If we're being honest, you are the second best Rose in Chicago. So in reality, what are we really losing? But getting rid of Jalen pays off because we get picks and we also sign big boy Brad Miller. Brad Miller may be the perfect big man for what we want here as he does have a bit of an ability to shoot but more importantly he was a revolutionary passing big man for his time as in the 2004 season he averaged 14 points 10 rebounds and 4.3 assists per game in real life. We love this for Steph because the strategy here is for Steph to be able to tap into his three-point shooting and scoring ability. BBB big boy Brad is the type of playmaker we need. I also want a few more shooters around Steph. As in terms of team success, I think we spam threes, at least in theory, go for as many threes made as possible and just take over the league. In a weird twist, we are kind of an inspiration for the seven seconds or less Suns to be. So here is what we're working with with our first roster. And it's not going to be perfect at first, I know. But we're pretty good. Jason Richardson at the two, Steven Jackson at the three, along with the main man that is so important here, seven seconds or less Suns. Yes, they may have had Jason Richardson, but they also had Amari Stoudemire manning that power forward spot. We now have stolen Steve Nash's pick and roll duo, and we have turned him into the guy setting picks as Steph Curry launches limitless threes, and Amari crashes and then dunks on people's faces. I think our bench is also stacked. We've got Nene, Mike Dunleavy, and Quinnen Richardson, so I have to say, I'm very, very confident headed into this first season, and let's see how it plays out. I do want to say we are doing so with a purpose, because I want to explain the GOAT series to you. As in this series, we are are going to get the answer. Who is the NBA's GOAT in each era? As in this GOAT series, we are taking the best players in NBA history and running them through five-year career simulations in three different eras, the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, possibly four, we might go to the 2010s. The goal of this is to find out who is the ultimate GOAT. Will Steph Curry's shooting in these early eras make him the best player to ever live? Or will 100 point per game score Wilt just dominate everyone? We're going to keep track of it all, as in each era, we're big time tracking. I'm not only talking MVPs, titles, first team all NBAs, we're going to be going into playoff games and tracking just how well these players perform in those games. Personally, I cannot wait to see who makes the most playoff game winners and there might be one in this video. The goal is to make a fair goat race though and so for every player we go through, whether it is Steph or Will or LeBron or Jordan, the rules are every goat plays 42 minutes in the rotation each season. Every team will keep an eight man rotation for consistency and because I also think that's the best way to win in 2k. However, I also think you can just spam minutes in 2k so every other starter can play at most 38 minutes. Okay, and so we are way better than I even thought. I was hoping for a four seed and then we make a playoff run, but it looks like we might be the best team in the entire NBA in year one. 50 games in, we are leading the Eastern Conference with the Washington Wizards and a Michael Jordan I want to forget about as a wizard, as a Bulls fan. Somehow, as the second second best team in the league. The top seed in the East does give Steph Curry his first all-star appearance, which is huge for the GOAT leaderboard as in 2K. It is hard as a rookie to make the all-star team due to whatever voting they have going on in this game. Look what happens when we trust robots. Of course, big boy Brad joining Steph as a dominant force on this all-star team. Not surprised at all. I am curious, are we the best team in the league? And as we ride things out, we finish at 61 and 21, which is not good enough for MVP. As Shaq, aka a poor man's Brad Miller, wins the MVP over Steph, who 
looks like he put up better stats i'm just saying only steph isn't even first team all nba he makes the second team that is a strike on the goat leaderboard someone's probably gonna have five first team all nbas i'm sure especially because the nba's golden child in lebron james is first team all nba over us ouch the lakers spurs and Suns all do look tough in the west but we've crushed the east of course though it is the eight seeded first team all nba lebron james matching up against us in the first round and i've got to say we're crushing you lebron time for revenge only it's what is happening not only do the Cavs win two out of the first five games here but before we face off against lebron first we're going to try to take down anthony black as if you're enjoying this video please subscribe and turn on post notifications to catch the rest of the goat series trust me there is going to be a ton of drama also personally i do love setting big goals so our goal is not only to get to 1 million subscribers but on the way we're going to take down nba players with youtube channels as our targets on the way Anthony for now though let's jump back into the video as we jump into game six I will explain the rules are I am sim casting every single playoff game and we are going to watch every game that is within three points in the final two minutes we are in game six of the first round of the playoffs hoping very much that Steph Curry does not choke however immediately uh, Zudrunas Ilgauskas on the Cavs ties things up we're in game six we're watching we've got Steph versus Ilgauskas 1v1 and boy Steph hand up but it doesn't matter he drains LeBron, no. LeBron is not known for making threes his rookie season. Come on. Steph has to make this. Ta. Here goes LeBron, a chance to tie the game. We can stop LeBron, we can stop this legacy. He's being a big body. How are you being? No, no, but he just big bodied us all the way to the rim. Going to overtime, see what happens. It's too bad the Simcast did not go our way at all. And all of this was just for a loss. Ouch, mm. this has been hurting. Luckily, we smack the Cavs in game seven. Get out of here, LeBron. Golden child, no more. Then we easily take care of the Pacers in five games in round two. And then we finally find a tough matchup in the Charlotte Hornets as Jamal Mashford and Carlos Boozer, former all-star on the Jazz turned bull one day in real life. They have combined in this to create a fearsome duo mm. that helps the Hornets win two out of their first four games against us. We do keep home court advantage going into game five where Steph hits a big shot to give us a five point lead. Let's go. Again, we're keeping track of in-game shots. Steph is currently three for three. And here's Amari connecting on a big shot. Great pass from Steph. And really, this was no contest. I do want to point out, Amari, you're that guy. You are that star with Steph. I could see them being together for all five seasons. Same hopefully with big boy Brad Miller. Now game six brings us another close one as again, we are watching and this time Steph gives us the first First miss of his gameplay career and this is not a pretty one although Jay Rich does knock down a huge jumper to give us a lead our hat has fallen but it doesn't matter David Wesley please that's a name player but he misses it doesn't matter we know who David Wesley is but that doesn't matter Brad Miller Steph Steph oh, I have no idea how my voice sounded Steph but three you tell I'm getting nervous for these sims. I want Steph to win. Overall, Steph continues to come up huge for us when it matters. Because after a Hornets miss, this was game over, which brought us to the Lakers and the ultimate MVP revenge in Shaq versus Kobe. Of course, what would be built? Oh yeah, they also have a prime Kobe Bryant. Now, this is literally the season where the Lakers fell apart in real life. So I'll be honest, I'm uh, hoping for the same kind of vibe. I will say I did not expect us to be embarrassing them. I think we're turning some young children into Clippers fans right now. Okay, so we take the NBA Finals four to one and we never even get to watch a finals game. Boo Shaq, boo Kobe, championship title secured in year one. In terms of the GOAT leaderboard for season one, 50 points should be solid for a rookie too. However, I wouldn't say any of these records are exactly unbreakable. As 10 three-pointers made is impressive, but I could see someone making more than that. And 18 assists is also very high, but Magic Johnson does exist and one day he will be doing this exact simulation. Still though, one title is big time. That gives us momentum and we are going to ride that momentum all the way into the NBA draft where with the 30th pick, we are able to select J.R. Smith robbing LeBron of his most trusted teammate. Again, take that golden boy. We also get Tony Allen. So if getting name players means something, we are doing something great. In terms of off season moves, we did win the championship four to one. So it's kind of hard to justify changing a whole lot. I did almost go for Richard Lewis. In another simulation, I might 
Nate because he is an awesome sharpshooting power forward, but Brandon Amari held it down. So instead, I moved Nene and Steven Jackson for Jerry Stackhouse. I wanted a knockdown shooter next to Steph here. Who knows? Maybe Steph can break that 20 assist mark. I also want to go for the 74 win mark, and I want five titles now. So here is our roster for year two. Again, I didn't touch much because we won the title. So let's just let it ride. Let's just start simming. And here we are at the trade deadline where we have an incredibly tough decision to make. Jason Richardson only has one year left on his contract and I can't re-sign him. After taking a look at the trade possibilities, I think about going with Ron Artest. I went to St. John's. I love him because of that. But instead, I don't play with my heart. I take the chance and keep Jason Richardson. I hope back-to-back -back titles changes his mind and he wants to stay. Let it ride baby and suddenly we're at 70 wins now i don't want to pat myself on the back so i won't that's lame but i've got to say this mvp for steph curry that's the man we're patting on the back because not only did we steal amari but steph has now stolen the league mvp straight up over steve nash somewhere far off in canada rj barrett might be playing hockey his godfather let him down lebron is first team all nba again we get it. So he is sneaking up as a legitimate rival to us in this scenario, let alone the entire code series as a whole. Looking at the standings here, we may have a problem that again, we're facing an eight seed that's a juggernaut. The 76ers with Allen Iverson, who led the NBA in scoring with 35 points per game. We're not trying to get stepped over by AI, but in game one, we are already in a closing situation. We are only up two, but almost right away, I think we're running away with it. Steph connects on another three. Does this guy miss in game? Gameplays, and Amari is proving to be that perfect big man combo. Then though, the Sixers go crazy on us. Steph misses in the clutch. We need to go ice game one. Steph Curry is better than Allen Iverson. Prove it to him, boy. Prove it to him. Prove it to him. It's so good. It's so good that went in. It's so good that went in. Allen Iverson for three. No. Uh, Allen Everson for three. No, my voice is squeaking. What is happening though? LeBron and Allen Everson drain threes on us. Steph, chance to win. We're good. We are good. I believe in my boy. I'm sitting back. So not only did Steph just miss his first and possibly only game winning shot in this scenario, we don't know. We do know it's an 0 for 1 on the scoreboard, but also we get smoked in the simcast. We're down in round one to the eight seed. Then things do not get better. We're in game two now. We've gone from a 70 win potential dynasty to I hope we're not a future documentary. And maybe we will be. There's not much to say as Allen Iverson dunks in our face while scoring 53 points on the way to a two to nothing series lead. You're not even seeing my face on this one. Steph did add to his shot counter in this game, but at what cost? Game three is a close six point win as Amari comes up big, but here we are in game four. We need this one. Also, before we continue, I tried to give away an NBA finals package on this channel, but the winner never answered me. So I'm going to double the giveaway here and give two people that are subscribed to this channel VIP packages to the NBA All-Star game as a thank you. I thought doubling the giveaway here was the best way I could think of to solve this problem after someone didn't answer such a big giveaway. I want to make sure this giveaway happens so that I can show my thanks to you guys. So now two VIP packages to the NBA All-Star game. I'm going to pick the winners on December 1st so that we can make sure both people answer. I hope you understand I'm trying my best here in this situation. This is the best solution I could think of for now. Now, let's get back into the video. Here we go. Here we go. He's open. Yes, Brad. Yes, big boy Brad. Yes. We need, we need a basket. We need a basket. We need a basket. We need a basket. Any basket. Steph though. Steph though. Dude, he does not miss. Okay. So it's two to two. We easily win the series. That's nice. Okay, great surprise. We're just going to pretend like those first two games never happened. We're in a four game win streak, technically headed into the second round where we are playing a slightly past his prime, but still incredible Jason Kidd, a man who admirably brought the New Jersey Nets in real life to two absolute destructions in the NBA finals. The New Jersey Nets literally relocated because of how bad those finals were. 
definitely a worthy matchup for Steph, who struggles horribly in game one and shoots one for six from three with 16 points as we immediately lose home court advantage and possibly, I guess, our house. It's now Jason Mann. I'm done with these puns with Jason Kidd. We're just beating him. Game two brings us the Mike Dunleavy game as he not only connects on a big shot around the basket, but look at how smooth this jumper is. Water. We're back in this. It's one to one. And then Steph with a big 37 points and 13 assists in game three. And we are rolling, except we are not rolling. We lose game four and game five. This is the second round. We're not even in the Eastern Conference Finals. We've been struggling. Maybe Jerry Sackhouse is not the answer. I'm not sure, but Steph needs to come up here. So we're watching game six and both teams trade misses, including Steph and not even a big boy Brad can bail us out. What's happening? How do we need a basket here? Jason Richardson, you're dribbling everywhere. You're so, that man is so short. I don't know how he, we might trade Jason Richardson. Sack, Curry, Steph, come to me. Come over here, Steph. Yes, yeah, you're so open. Why did he not shoot? Ah! Another Steph Curry miss. The Bulls bounced out of the second round of the playoffs as Steph shoots seven for 27 in the loss against an aging Jason Kidd. Yikes. I'm doing my best to get Steph the most success possible here, but we are also being fair. I'm sorry, Steph. We're gonna remember this one. Overall, looking at the highs, in year two, Steph did have 57 points, which is great, and 22 assists, which is also great. Worthy numbers I'm sure he feels amazing about at home, watching the finals, which his rival, Jason the Man, wins in our face. I, I feel sorry for Steph. I think we're gonna be doing a lot better. Steph has taken a major hit to his GOAT resume. We need to set things up. So we're moving through this off season with a purpose. And it's nice to discover that the Clippers, remember that trade, have graced us with the number two pick in this draft, which would be really fun to take if I had maybe won the championship and believed. We lost in the second round. Time is ticking. We cannot take a draft pick, which means we're teaming up with Russia. We're teaming up with Russia to win an NBA championship. Listen, so Andre Karolinko is an 87 overall, 24 year old in 2K. In real life in 2004, Andre Karolinko was an all-star at the age of 22 with 16 and a half points per game, eight rebounds per game, and as a small forward, three blocks a game. He was one of those players you can actually truly describe as before his time. And also he was a man who somehow had a literal hall pass from his wife. You are reading a headline that is real, but I will tell you one thing here. We are not focused on diplomatic relations or the relations of a marriage in this simulation. We are focused on winning Steph Curry a title again. Anyway, despite the controversy we make in the off season, we do also manage to steal Gerald Wallace as a free agent in a signing that is true Scotty Pippen-esque in the way that we are kind of, you know, screwing him over. For us, he's going to be a very solid bench guy or a big time trade piece. We also love four guys over 88 overall after player progression with Steph at a 90. We're done with the offseason, looking at our rotation for year three. I think we're stacked. Jerry Stack housed. I gotta stop. But Jerry Stackhouse could be sixth man of the year candidate. My only thing for Steph Curry's own GOAT candidacy, I want the wins record. I keep saying it. I want it. We need to find that that balance here though because we need to keep winning MVPs as we already didn't make first team all NBA as a rookie which means I'm kind of worried we have too much scoring and Steph is not going to be able to stand out but we're going to worry about that later so instead we moonwalk our way to 20 and 0 before the Houston Rockets take us down but 20 and 0 to start the season I didn't even mean to make a lame space pun on that one I will say doesn't count. What does count is we are crushing everyone on your screen in front of you before, of course, our rival Jason Kidd takes us down right before the trade deadline. Which brings the question, would you make a trade with a 39 and 14? The answer is yes, because I don't want to worry about trying to sign Matt Harpering in the offseason. So instead, we get a young and promising Jonathan Bender who joins the group and hopefully we can continue this pace. Hopefully that's not some kind of game changer. Four wins later, all-star break. We're looking great, except that is Shaq on the Celtics. Kobe and him definitely did not make up, but they will one day. As for us, we have three all-stars and big boy Brad, Steph, as well as Amari Stoudemire continuing on with this season as we roll. We have a chance to break the wins record headed into this final month. Only is now Memphis destroys us and then we straight 
Are we choking? We choked against LeBron and get a mere 72 wins. However, the Cavs have built a 60 win juggernaut. We're 12 wins better than them, but I'm not trusting these Sims right now. So we've got two rivals here. We've got LeBron James looking right over our shoulder and we have Jason Kidd to take down. As we all know, don't mean a thing without a ring. With those 72 wins, we do win the MVP again with Steph, which means Steve Nash's legacy is destroyed here. I'm sorry, but you're not even Jason Kidd in this scenario. You're not even in play. Chris Paul's rookie of the year on the Bobcats. That'll probably never matter. LeBron is again, first team all NBA. We've already momentarily sunned Jason Kidd. That's him, second team all NBA. And there's BJ Jameson emerging from the local YMCA to become second team all NBA in Seattle, desperately trying to save that franchise. In terms of awards, Steph is the only star we have, I guess, as Andre Kirilenko is second team all defense. That nationality keeping him from first team. It wasn't me, it was the voters. Looking at the Cavs, we find they even have Jay Will, a father figure. Dad? That creates even more of a revenge arc for them. And I've got to say, I do not like being a Jay Will op. In the West, the Grizzlies win 60 games with a team that is pretty good with Bad EA and Pau Gasol. I am confident though that if we played them in the finals, we're taking them down. And we're the worst number one seed to ever play in the NBA, as in game one, we are again jumping in. We're down two. What is wrong with us? Luckily for the Bucks, Sam Cassell has a spasm. Brad, aka Young Shaq Diesel, has the game. But then Michael Red. Get out of here, connecting on this shot. Amari Stoudemire cuts it to one, cuts it to one. Then Michael Red cannot do it again. Here we go, that's big boy Brad, man. Everyone's up and that's, that's Kirilenko, that's Russia. How, what, set your feet, set your feet. Sam Cassell, always known for his gigantic, you know what, balls as we lose. We've been taking some L's in the gameplay, it feels like, I don't know, is it just me? And we go to Karolinko. I need to... I don't even want to say it, but I do want to say Russian mob, Russian mob betting on the game, Andre Karolinko. We might have to get him out of here. I would say I truly cannot believe this and I would be distraught, except the Sim saves us. Two easy wins for Steph. So now if you're the GOAT, prove it, please. Tie game in game four. The court is looking awesome. What's not awesome is Reed tying the game with less than 40 seconds to go. I'm not even sure if Reed is real. Yes. Curry passes it to Kirilenko. Trifecta! Don't rush. Don't force things. Let the game come to you. Steph does make both free throws to ice this. And here we are. The Bucks do come close to pushing us. Mm. We're even going to a game seven. Mm. I'm just, I'm not sweating about this. Is what we're telling ourselves. We do win game seven though, which means we are immediately playing our rival, Jason Kidd. Steph, this is your chance. Here it is. Mm. I believe. Does the world believe? Michael Jordan took down the Pistons. You're taking down old man Kidd. And immediately we're looking and things are looking great. Big time three, clean looking shot. But rough miss, rough miss. Why? Jerry Stackhouse, terrible, fall away three. Everyone on our team is shooting, but Steph! Jason Kidd, chance to win the game. At least he's driving. At least he makes it. How do you miss? Jason Kidd just missed the bunniest of bunnies. Rabbit season? No, no, no. Horrible jokes, but we, we take. Okay. This series is actually not close luck. We beat the Nets by 40 to win the series. And then we have draft class rival, Chris Bosh and superstar Vince Carter in the Eastern Conference Finals. Not LeBron, golden child, golden boy. You got. Right before we jump into this playoff game though, I do want to remind you guys, we are in a current battle against an NBA player here. So if you are enjoying this video, please subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video and we can continue on our road. Looking at this playoff game, in game one against the Raptors, we get a shot that can only be described as the flick if it becomes historic, as Toronto does have a two point lead with 24 seconds left. All right, we got Amari, Amari, yes, roll, yes, 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 oh my. Tie game, Vince has a chance to be the hero. Remember, he chose graduation over his team. Take that how you will. He's wide, oh. How are they missing these? Yo, yo. Oh, I'm so bailed, so bailed, please. We can do this in overtime. Let's be Zen, Steph, I mean, I have no control, but Steph, be Zen. We're looking incredible, and uh, Amari! Ah! <laughs> oh no, no, we, no, no, no. Is that like bad karma? We're throwing alley-oop passes up one in the playoffs as Vince Carter, no, 
No! Time out, we're talking it over. Can we have Steph Curry shoot this time? Please, he's got the ball. He passes, of course. He can't be, there he is though. There's one man we want touching that ball. It is big boy Brad Miller. Andre Karolinko, please dunk on him. Please, no, no! Have you seen that 2K spin before? We've all seen that spin. We all know that was going out of bounds. Okay. Raptors, chance to win this game. The man is wide open! A huge Allen Houston miss. And after this, we start rolling. Guys, we're here together with this. We have become an indestructible force. We annihilate the Toronto Raptors. We have done so much damage to Canada in this series. And then we bring out the brooms twice. In the past, I needed a broom man to officially apply and sign up for a job. Cause that's how much sweeping we were doing. We sweep Gilbert Arenas and Carmelo Anthony and the Denver Nuggets. And they are just not a combo that I thought we would not sweep. So life makes sense. And at this point, the corner has turned. We are NBA champions, we are the stars, we're doing it. And as the stars with this newfound confidence, I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna be ruthless here. Uh, my favorite part about this series is we are trying to maximize everything. Wins records, most points scored, most MVPs. So every season we want the best roster possible and we did not break the wins record last year. Steph has also not been putting up enough points at all, enough three pointers. He just has not been that 40 point per game scorer that I imagined. Is 40 way too high? Maybe, but can we get there? What I'm saying is all of this is a lot of words for me to explain my, I'm just saying it, betrayal betrayal of big boy brad he brought us two championships he grew up in front of our eyes he might be a big man now but we trade him for sean marion the matrix i mean in real life sean marion was also on the seven seconds or less sons he was also a four-time all-star and really a generation talent changing player he was the hybrid three slash four that helped create that type of archetype in this generation of basketball we also do move jerry stackhouse because he has just not even been a part of this simulation where's he been jerry maybe somewhere else you'll thrive for now michael red who averaged almost 27 points per game at one point in real life i love the shooting that he's going to bring i'm hoping this is the balance that gets us the wins record and the most individual success possible here's our rotation for year four we are a mega team we are one of the best teams that I would ever see in real life. And as we start this simulation, I'm hoping we can just go and go. And would you look at that? Here we are. We're on the pace. We are doing it. There are several things at stake here. This team is crushing. If we get to 73 wins, we'd break the technical wins record here. 74 would get the real life wins record. But also there's going to be a record for who had the best team ever. And there's a chance this might be it. The Bulls finished with 74 wins. And Steph has cemented this season individually with an MVP and an incredible season. We do need to win the title here. The stakes have never been higher for us to be considered an all time choker. The problem is I would love to create some drama for that storyline only there's none this bulls team is both a regular season and playoff juggernaut as we only take a single loss headed into the nba finals against finally where have you been prime kobe bryant who has replaced shaq with sharif abdul rahim a player i personally love in the sims but he was only a one-time all-star in real life and that's compared to shaq this might be a challenge Game one is immediately bringing us into a two point lead. We gotta lock things down. Been so dominant and this game again has no drama at all as we catch fire and embarrass the Lakers. 1-0 in the NBA Finals. Here's game two, we win by 36 points. Steph Curry honors Kobe with 24 assists. Game three, Steph is now playing at historic levels. Here's that guy. He's the man, 48 points. And then we're bringing out the brooms. It does turn out. Sharif is no Shaq. He's no Brad Miller. 74 wins, an MVP, and only one loss in the entire playoffs. Easily the most dominant season we have ever seen in the GOAT race. This might be video one, but pretty dominant. At this point, Steph Curry's career highs are 58 points and 24 assists, although I've got to say, 12 three-pointer seems kind of low for what we're doing. The thing is, 2K's era simulations seem to make it so that even if Steph has 
has a 99 three-point tendency. He will not shoot too many threes over the league average, which is actually a kind of cool thing because in the sim, we cannot spam threes in that way. We had to build a modern day type of roster at least a little. Okay, we look nothing like a modern day roster. I'll admit that. We are in our final season though. And I do want to say in year five, I am confident we are going to win the championship. That might be hubris. It might end up blowing up in my face, but we were just so dominant that I want Steph to score more. So we're going to trade Michael Red. We know he brings in too much scoring if we do want to maximize Steph to his potential. And our new sixth man is four time defensive player of the year, Ben Wallace. I have a personal story with Ben Wallace. I was about five feet away from him at some event and I really wanted to say hi, but then I was talking a little bit during as the speaker was talking to be fair. And Ben Wallace looked over at me with a look straight up of how dare you disrespect this speaker now I hate you. So that's how I felt, but I don't think he remembers my face. So we will be coming back to that. And by coming back to that, I mean, I'm going to try again with Ben Wallace to become his best friend. As for the current simulation you are watching, you saw our rotation is stacked at the all-star break. We only have four losses. We can only get seven to break the wins record we've already set, which I'm not sure is going to happen because somehow Steph is our only all-star. Did we do it? Is he about to put up the most historic stats ever? Or does the NBA just really dislike us? Are we the bad guys? Is it the Russia thing? With this chip on our shoulder with the all-star part we love america here we attempt to do the impossible and break our own wins record and would you look at that yo 75 wins and with the championship experience under his belt and with another mvp to add to the collection at this point do we doubt steph curry well first rounds have been really hard for us in the past but in these playoffs it's the exact same thing we have only taken one loss headed into the nba finals we're going up against pal gasol and we immediately take the first three games so are we sweeping back-to-back -back finals that would be amazing and the thing is even the one game we get a chance to step into it's a blowout there's no competition how gasol is even freezing on the court it's chilly by the end of the simulation one thing is clear building around steph curry in this era is almost overpowered four mvps four titles five all-stars he did miss the first team all nba in his rookie season in real life he would be the goat easily so as we look at steph's final career highs i'm gonna say i'm very surprised he did not break 60 points ever or 12 three-pointers made in that last year i will be honest in terms of the goat race i'm not sure if any of these records are going to stand unless magic johnson cannot break 24 assists as for our own goat competition next video we're going to be doing is steph curry in the 1990s against michael jordan and there we have it guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed today's video i wonder if steph curry is going to be the ultimate goat in this race i would say no I'm not going to give my early prediction as to who I think will be the GOAT of everyone, at least in these 2K simulations, but I do want to say, if you are still here, thank you so much for being such a real one. Sticking around for this long is incredible. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you could see the passion behind it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that new series music.